Crimson Trace announces the revolutionary Link, the world's first wireless laser and white light system. Combining a green laser at 300 lumen light with instinctive activation for AR-type modern sporting rifles, Link offers wireless control of the laser and light from the ergonomic replacement grip, eliminating the need to reach for the rifle's forend. Link. Smart. Simple. Secure. Available now. Visit CrimsonTrace.com to find a dealer near you. Today on Tom Gresham's Gun Talk. This past week, Tom was at the Crimson Trace booth at SHOT Show 2019, getting the scoop on the latest releases. Reps from Crimson Trace, Mossberg, Smith & Wesson, Brownells, Ruger, and Timney Triggers can finally spill the beans about what's new for this year. Plus, training talk with Gunsight, a report from the SHOT Show floor, and more. And now, here's Tom. We're with you, Tom Gresham. It's Gun Talk. We are at the Crimson Trace booth at the SHOT Show, SHOT Show 2019. Glad that you could be with us. It's a hoot and a half. Now, if you know the SHOT Show, you know that we're actually not at the SHOT Show when you're hearing this because it's over by the time you're hearing this. That's okay. We're doing this when uh, live in the middle of the show, and then you're hearing it a few days later. But that doesn't mean it's not news because that's what we like to say. If it's news to you, it's news to us. Wait, What? <laughs> Uh, we're visiting right now with Ryan Donahue from uh, Crimson Trace. Ryan, thanks for letting us uh, set up shop in your place here, man. Absolutely. Oh, hold on here a second. Uh, what did I do here? Oh, there we go. Let's try that. That'd be better. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to have you there. There you go. I got it. Okay. Um, it is absolutely wonderful over here at SHOT Show, and it's a pleasure to be back with you again, Tom. Absolutely. We're, we're, we're having... Okay, no, no, I'm sorry, we're not having fun. We are working <laughs> like crazy, and this is no fun at all. No right? fun. It's awful. <laughs> Uh, I, oh, we should tell people, the Crimson Trace booth is no longer all by itself because it is now part of the Smith & Wesson family, That's actually, right. a, a, another name. We call it the Smith & Wesson family. Fair American enough? Outdoor Brands, but we can uh, call it Smith & Wesson. Okay, American Outdoor Brands. All right. I uh, got acquired, what, roughly a year ago? Roughly a year, yep. yep. All right. And you guys have been busy in that time. I'm going to move your mic just a smidge right there. We sure, go. there we go. Okay. So tell them, you know, I'll be... Crimson Trace, known as a laser company yep. uh, and a pioneer in the laser world. But when I walk into the booth here, I say, well, it doesn't look like a laser company to me. It looks like you guys are doing a whole lot of other things here. Yeah, we took those little dots and put them inside of a scope and put them inside of some sites. So we launched 11 rifle scopes and five sites. Wow. So it is quite an undertaking, but we are extremely proud of what we came out with. So Crimson Trace is now an optics company. 100%. Yep. So we're in the game. You have rifle scopes and you have red dot sights. Yes. Five full red dots. Wow. Okay. Uh, I was looking at, was it the one to five we were looking at over there? Or, yep. one, or one to eight? Yeah. Yes, the one, one, to fi- one to five and one to eight both yeah. have my favorite reticle in it. Yes. Um, I call it the disappearing reticle. So it is a really awesome first focal plane scope. We have a bright red dot. And then when you crank it past three magnification, your milling tree comes into play. So you almost have two reticles in there. You do. It's, it's actually a little bit hard to explain. It's um, at a low power. You have a ring that where actually you just center whatever it is you're shooting in this ring. It's a bright red ring. Uh, it's a speed shooting type exactly. of setup. What I do, three gun, put it on the target, pull the trigger. Okay. So, but then as you increase the magnification, this ring grows and grows and grows until it actually hits the edges of the scope tube, and then it's just gone. It's gone. And at that point, you can now see the crosshairs, the reticle. Yes. So for longer shots, you just crank it up. The, the bright red ring is gone, yep. and now you shift over to the crosshairs. It's, it's ingenious. How did you guys come up with that? It's almost like magic. It is almost um, like magic. So we worked a long time on all the reticles, and a lot of the folks over here, including the project managers, are all shooters. Right. Um, so we all uh, went and decided that we needed to make some custom-designed reticles, and we were really going to play with the first focal plane. Um, and do some magic tricks. So all of your scopes at this point are first focal plane scopes. Yes. But I think I heard yesterday the plan is you will actually enlarge that and probably go to uh, second focal plane plane, uh, reticles at some point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I can neither confirm or deny that to you right now, Tom. Okay. Um, But, yes, we are in the optics game now, and we do have some pretty cool stuff slated for next year. So, okay, okay. for the most part, as I look at the scope lineup, it looks like they all have a tactical look to them. So I, I think that's kind of the heritage of what you've done first. Yes. 
Uh, well, I say tactical. Tactical and, frankly, competition's three-gun type Yeah, tactical, competition, long-range, PRS. Um, you can but, see you're, you're a competition shooter. You're a three-gunner. I can see that yeah, in these. Yeah, um, so that's in a lot of those. The competition is in mind. But we also have a lot of hunting um, optics that we have right now with some simpler reticles. So we have two one-to-eights. We have the one-to-eight for me, for Ryan, okay. and then we have another one-to-eight. <laughs> Do you call it just Ryan's scope? Is that <laughs> what you call that's that? it. That's it. <laughs> um, and then we have another one-to-eight that um, simpler reticle, non-illuminated, um, and it's a pretty amazing, maybe on a coyote rifle, right. you know, that right. you were going after, um, or a pig gun, um, something like that. So you could use those, but we will expand more into the hunting space. On the long range side, you've yep. got more magnification. What do we? What you know? Give us an idea of a couple of them that you have there. Sure. So um, I'll tell you about my favorite two over there as well. So we have a three to twenty four. Um, that's in our five series, and that has our version of the Horus reticle inside of there. Okay. Um, so and then we have a three to eighteen, which is also in there. Right. Uh, simpler reticle, just more crosshair based. Mm-hmm. Um, so those are. Our to high-end, long-range. What is the... I mean, there's got to be like a, a thinking behind the scope line where you say, we make scopes that do this, or this is why... Because, I mean, Lord knows there are a lot of scopes in the world. There you certainly know? are. So why Crimson Trace? Why does somebody need to come look at what you guys are doing? So what I always tell people is um, we're, new, we're the new kid on the block right, right. now. So we went for really high-end glass... Um, really high-end features. We have some really cool features that I'll tell you about, too. Okay. Um, and then we d- we said, because we're the new kid on the block, we're going to drive the pricing down as low as we can possibly get it for our consumers. Huh. So the features that you are going to get are inside the high-end scopes, and you're not going to pay the high-end price. Just give me an idea. What kind of features are we talking about? So we we have this really cool thing. Um, they're lines that are on, on the side of the scope. Um, so we call them our leveling lines. But for a kid like me who got a scope maybe for Christmas and I want to take it out of the box and put it on my gun and Mm -hmm. it takes me about an hour and a half, you know, to pull out all my tools and get that thing level. Right. um, But basically, if you've ever aligned a camshaft on a car, um, so you have your two open rings and it's got two lines that are on it. Right. You line it up with the lines, lock it down, you're within a half of MOA. So you've got lines on the exterior of the scope. Yep, four lines. So that when you drop it into the mounts, it's just easy to line it up and get it level. Because that's, that's how many times have you mounted a scope, then you put it, the rifle to your shoulder and go, ah, oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's candid. It's totally like, candid. i got to start over again. Yeah, and when our engineers showed it to me, I was like... I, that's it's a head the, slapper, man. It's the simplest. Th- how has nobody done this before? Really? Yeah. So, um, wow. Really cool premium stuff. Well, like you know that. what it is? That comes from people who have mounted a lot of scopes and screwed them up like we all have. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And the whole line is uh, batteries for life. I don't know anybody out there who's doing that. Right. Um, so this, that's kind of a, a holdover from the whole Crimson Trace lasers. So yep. any scope that has batteries in it, illuminated reticles, yep. batteries for life. Batteries for you life. a new set of batteries once a year. A new set of batteries once a year. Wow. And uh, no questions asked, uh, lifetime warranty on all of them. Really? Yep. Okay. Well, that's cool. Yeah. And also, you guys did something interesting. I'm looking right behind me on the uh, rack here. It's a name I'm very familiar with. In fact, the, the, the Gun Talk listeners are familiar with Laser Light, but that's now part of the Crimson Trace family. It is. We are very excited that we have another brand uh, that we picked up in, in Laser Light. And uh, I can tell you guys who are maybe not as familiar with it, uh, laser bore sights, different training aids. Um, but Jason and myself, Jason is one of the product managers on the rifle scopes. Uh, we're usually there. We usually close down Crimson Trace. So at night when uh, when it closes, we'll take a whole bunch of the laser light objects and put them all over the office, and we'll do a little run gun in, inside the office. And I can just tell you, if you have more time in your life than you need, <laughs> we can occupy that. Because once you get the laser light I want to call them toys, but they're really trainers. Yep, they're trainers. And different games and cans that jump around when you shoot them with with a laser, and you do it inside. And, I mean, we've had our grandkids, five and nine, shooting these things and having a ball. But you get just any two adults, anybody, you hand them, you know, these laser guns. You know, they're made for that. And you start shooting these various games, and an hour goes by in a blink. And you didn't even know it. Yeah. And you're getting trigger time. And that's, that's right. another thing. These laser trainer guns actually have good triggers, and you're yep. actually getting real-world, no kidding, good training. 
And, and something cool to note that I didn't know because I've known laser light. So you do have the trainers. You do have the blue guns uh, with the triggers in it. But they also make another product that will work on a live firearm. Right. Um, attach it to it. And you basically hold both of the buttons on the side of the laser. And what it does, it's um, vibration sensitive. So what will happen is it sends a laser down range when you pull the trigger. So, so you can use that. So when you get the firing pin or the striker goes forward, yep. it clicks and it fires the laser just from fires, the vibration. Fires the laser from the vibration. That's so slick. You can you can use your pistol with that product. Even better. Yep. So that's pretty sweet. All right, so we got scopes. We have laser light, but we did not mention the red dots that you guys have. Yeah, so five red dots there. Um, we have our 1200, which is for pistols. We are a pistol company, so there was no way we were putting it okay. out without doing a pistol one. Right. Um, we've got the 13 and 1400, which are rated for rifles and shotguns. Um, those are open red dots. Okay. Um, and then we have a closed red dot, which is the 1000. And last but not least, we have a fixed 3.5 battle sight. Hmm. Um, with a hybrid BDC reticle in it. That's something that, a uh, very interesting reticle. It has a triangle at the top. Um, so from 0 to 100 yards on a 5.56223, you'd be in the triangle, on the tip of the triangle, and then bullet drops would be 200, 300, 500. So what's the application for that? Well, battle sight is something that you could put on a 308 something that you could put on a 223-556. Um, it is a really cool... Uh, sight because of its ability to, both eyes opened, mm -hmm. you can look into it. Your eyes will adjust for a close range target. Right. Put the triangle on it. Then if you close your eyes, same, we didn't touch anything. You're not, you're not changing magnification, but you close one eye and now you can shoot out to the longer distance. So what you're really talking about is you have a sight that's good from five yards to 500 yards. Yes. Yes. That's sweet. That I mean, that's a Seriously, it's a home defense rig. Yep. It's a truck gun in case you need to do something up close. But if you need to shoot something at 300, 400, 500, you're yep. there. And it's rugged. Yes. Which yeah. is the other part of it. Yeah, 100%. So all of the sights and scopes, we run through a battery of tests. Uh -huh. So they are all been military-grade tested, Tom. Very good. Ryan, I appreciate it, man. i got to keep running here. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, CrimsonTrace.com, right? CrimsonTrace.com. Or Very come good. and see me. Oh, well, SHOT Show will be over by the time they That's right. They won't, they'll be here this later, so they can't, <laughs> they can't come see you, right? Well, you can come see me at NRA Show. I'll be there. Ah. I'll awesome. run them through the whole line. Perfect. Very good. Tell appreciate them, it, man. Tell them Tom sent you. All right. Will do. Thanks so much. All right. All right. Don't go far. We'll be right back. We're at the Crimson Trace booth at the SHOT Show. I'm Tom Gresham. This is Gun Talk. Laser sights offer an immediate advantage when visibility is poor and seconds count. Laser sights can de-escalate a deadly encounter by engaging the target with a laser, enhancing your ability to protect your family, home, and country. Call 800-442-2406 or visit crimsontrace.com for a free copy of our laser training video, The Laser's Edge, and learn why Crimson Trace is making laser sights standard equipment. All the refinements in Smith & Wesson's M&P M2.0 pistol series shrunk to a perfect carry size in the new compact version. 4-inch barrel, light crisp M2.0 trigger, aggressively textured grip for enhanced control, four interchangeable palm swell inserts, two magazines, lifetime service policy, 15-round 9mm mag, 13-round 40 mag, the M&P M2.0 compact pistol. More at smith-wesson.com. Welcome back. Two very different instant replays. Instant replays during the big game Sunday and that instant replay that you just got on your smartphone of someone encroaching in or around your home. Blink cameras are the ultimate goal line defense. They're motion activated. When your blink camera detects something suspicious, you get an alert on your smartphone with a video replay of what Blink spotted. And now you can save 20% on all camera systems during Blink's big game sale. Blink cameras are easy to set up. They're wire-free and run on two AA lithium batteries that last up to two years. And Blink's live feed option lets you monitor your home from anywhere using easy Blink smartphone app. No contracts, no subscriptions, and Blink works with Alexa. Let Blink help watch your home while you're watching the big game. 
Save 20% on indoor and outdoor systems and add-on cameras now through Monday, February 4th, 9 p.m. Pacific. Visit BlinkProtect.com slash defense. BlinkProtect.com slash defense. All right, we're at the SHOT Show. I'm sorry you can't call in because this is kind of a tape deal. We're doing it on a Wednesday. It's over by the time you hear this on Sunday. That's okay. We're going to bring it to you as it's happening here, and it is a hoot and a half. I, uh, it's a little private party. I get together with about 60,000 of my closest friends here, including uh, Linda Powell, who's just joined us from Mossberg. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Good. It's a great show. It's, oh, it's tremendous. I can't believe the crowd's here. Uh, it's really something. And, but wait, 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 wait. I read yesterday that the AP says that gun sales are down, and it's pretty close to being the death of gun companies. <laughs> That's surprising. I wonder where they got that information. You said, said you couldn't tell it by your booth. No. Yeah. It was crazy yesterday. And this morning coming in, even before the show opened, I was amazed at the traffic heading down to the convention. Nobody wants guns these days. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, the demand and interest in guns continues to increase. And I know what they're doing. I mean, we understand. They would like to portray the image of gun sales being down and gun ownership is small and marginal, and you can pretty much ignore those people out there. And so what they do is they took the very peak right before the 2016 election when people were buying guns because of Hillary Clinton right, and compared it with today. If you take out like a three-month period right before the election and just look at the graph, it keeps going up. And we're pretty much right at where we're going to exceed even that peak very right. soon. Yeah. I mean, I know you guys are selling guns like crazy. Uh, we are. And uh, with our new introductions, it's uh, even going to be crazier. Right? I, you know, it's funny. I, I had seen, for those who don't know, Mossberg has a handgun, a concealed carry bull yes. handgun. And I'd seen the pictures and I thought, like everybody else, I went, really, Mossberg? You're going to make a pistol? Come on. Stay in your lane. You know, <laughs> you guys do shotguns. Come on. And then I went to the range on Monday. Yes. First time to shoot it. It was like, okay, this is pretty darn good. <laughs> I like this pistol. It's a small but not tiny 9 mm It is. Okay. It's very much a carry gun. It's not Ruger LCP tiny. Right. It's... But it's maybe even a little smaller than what some people call midsize, would you say? Uh, I think so, a little bit smaller, yes. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's uh, how many rounds? Uh, you get two magazines with it, so a six-round flush and a seven-round extended, single okay. stack. Clear. Clear, Clear. mag. Clear. You can just look at it and go, oh, yeah, I have cartridges in there. This is great. You know, and there's <laughs> been some pushback on that, but, you really? know, because it's, you know. It's not traditional. It's not traditional, <laughs> and people are thinking it's plastic. Oh, well, gosh. You know, but polymers today are unbelievable. Say, the can, hardness. Can and the, we get over this? Yes, please. I mean, like for 30 years, we've been having this super strong polymer stuff that in many cases, frankly, is better than metal. Absolutely it is. You don't have a lot of the issues that you do with metal. And for those who don't know, you being with a gun manufacturer, the reality is, everybody tells me, designing and making magazines is often more challenging than making the gun. Absolutely. As we know, if there's going to be a failure point with a mag-fed gun, right. that's where it usually starts. That's what you're going to look to. That's why I always tell people, look, if you're carrying a semi-auto, you have to have a second mag because, if same deal, if you're going to have a failure, chances are you can correct it by just slapping in a new mag. Right. You know, not that anybody's mags are bad, but that's just the reality of the deal. It is. It you is. Know? I mean, and you, you've been to gun site enough. You've done all the other stuff. You know, you... <laughs> You've done the mouth, but you bled all over your gun like yes. the rest of <laughs> Absolutely. You know, it's like, yes, it's what we do, right? And right. We, and we call it fun. <laughs> okay, so what do we call this pistol? It's called the MC1SC, Mossberg Carry Model 1 okay. Subcompact. Okay. Oh, that's almost like tipping your hand that there may be something coming ah, after this. Now, I'm not going to give away any secrets, but I will say uh, we are in handguns now. You don't generally name something number one unless there's going to be a number two or That's, three or four or five. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> describe the conversations over the last months and years internally because that is a shift of culture within Mossberg. It, it is, but, um, you know, we, we do a lot of marketing research, and we started looking at it years ago, and we saw the trends in the industry, and the mm -hmm. largest growing segment, obviously, is in handguns. Right. And we're not in handguns. And so as we dug a little deeper, you know, we saw that it was in 
concealed carry. Right. You know, usually 9 millimeter or 380. Um, you know, the size of it comes into play. So barrel length, we're at a 3.4 inch, which is pretty much right where people want it to be. Uh, overall, you know, length of the gun is like 6.25. Um, so, you know, we try to look at it and say, all right, we're getting into it. We mm-hmm. want to incorporate all those features that the market is saying that they're looking for, that they like. But what I think we did is we took it a step further then, and we added some Mossberg touches to it and innovation. Like what? Well, what I'm really most excited about is the safe takedown system. Okay. As you know, on many, many handguns, when you have to take them down to clean them or clear them or whatever, um, you pull, squ- pull the trigger. you got to pull squ- the trigger. And you don't with this. There's a simple plate at the rear of the slide that you push down and remove the slide. Then you can remove the striker assembly. You push the slide forward and it comes right off. Huh. So at no time do you have to even come near the, the trigger. Very easy. I mean, I always like to say I'm a girl, and I don't mind saying it. I'm not real (laughs) technical-minded. Even a girl can break this one down. (laughs) That's interesting. You know, and people say, well, you know, you should unload your gun. Yes, that's all true. Yes. And But if you have a design that allows for a failure point, and occasionally people, you know, when they think they're pulling the trigger on an unloaded gun, it goes bang. Uh, how about not designing it so that you have to pull the trigger to That's take right. it apart? That's right. Simple it's just an extra layer of safety. I want to mention, and I mean, you weren't even there. When I was out shooting your pistol, I just went up the line, took my place in line, and picked it up. And I shot two mags. And after the first shot center on steel, I went, okay, that's shooting right where I want it to. Right. And for the ne- all the rest of them, I made head shots at 15 yards easy. I mean, easy. It just wasn't a thing. Yeah. So I mean, the gun shoots and it has a really nice trigger. That's exactly the feedback we've been getting. You know, nice trigger, uh, accuracy. We did a gun sight event and actually had people shooting out at 50 yards. Really? Not that you're going to do I that with I this can see gun. That. Yeah. But it's that accurate. Yeah. I mean, if I can make headshots easy at 15 yards, you can make body shots at 50 yards. Right. It's not a problem at all. All right, I know you guys have some more things going on. Stay right where you are. When we come back, we're going to talk about the other things that Mossberg's doing and kind of setting the world on fire with a lot of innovation over the last two or three years. Absolutely. Okay, we're talking with Linda Powell. We're at the Crimson Trace booth. We're here uh, at the SHOT Show 2019, and we're going to have a whole lot of news for you, new products, new information, a lot of things going on. So don't go far. By the way, check it out, Mossberg.com. You can check that out. I'll be right back. This is Tom Gresham. We'll be right back to the Crimson Trace booth at Tom Gresham's Gun Talk. Good morning, Mr. Gresham. Your mission, should you decide to accept it, is to host a radio show that will bring truth and common sense to the discussion of firearms rights in this country. Good luck, Tom, to you and your Tom Gresham's Gun Talk team. Welcome back to the Crimson Trace booth at SHOT Show with Tom Gresham. And we're back. We're at the uh, the SHOT Show 2019, Las Vegas, Nevada, in the Crimson Trace booth, which is situated in the middle of the Smith & Wesson booth, which is situated in the middle of 700,000 square feet of exhibit space with some 60,000 people here, visiting with our friend Linda Powell from Mossberg. Wow. How many SHOT Shows for you? Do you even know? Uh, this is 22 or 23. Holy cow. That's a lot. Yes, it is. It's, 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 it is. Kind of, I tell people, it's like summer camp. You get to see the same kids every year you go back, right? <laughs> right. It, it's kind of that way. That's what makes it worthwhile. I must admit, it's a long week for those of us working the it, it show. It physically beats you up. Oh, but there's nothing better than seeing faces of your friends. Right. Getting yeah. a big hug from everybody. Exactly. Okay, so this is a big year for Mossberg, right? It, yes, it 100 is. 100 years? 100 years, still family-owned and operated. So we're into third generation. Family-owned. That's Family unusual owned. in the business. It I mean, is. Now that we're kind of rolled, rolled into corporate world a lot. Right. That's going to make uh, for different and maybe even easier decisions sometimes when you need to get something decided. You don't have to go through a lot of committees. Well, I've been in the corporate world before, too, and I must say it was refreshing to come over to a family owned and operated, not only because decisions Mm -hmm. are easier, but it's still a family type feel of the company. They care about their employees. Ah. We have some employees that have 40 and 50 years in. We have second generation, third generation employees. And I just felt like I was not joining, like, a team. I was coming in to be part of the family. 
People say that, but you've told me that enough. I really believe that. Absolutely. I mean, just that way there. Yeah. Well, and it kind of permeates through the product line. It's it's pretty cool. And it, to have that kind of history. So so what do you do with a 100-year anniversary? You bring out new stuff and cool old stuff or old-looking stuff. You know, that was kind of interesting about us introducing the MC1 uh, SC this year. The pistol. The pistol. Right. Because 100 years ago, when Mossberg started, the very first gun the company made was a little 22 handgun little called handgun. the Brownie. The and most people really? don't know that. No. And it was actually designed for trappers, for them to go and dispatch okay. animals. Right. But at the time, um, most gun capacity were two rounds. This was a little four-barrel design that rotated, so you actually had a capacity of four rounds. High capacity, four rounds. So it very quickly garnered interest over in the personal defense handgun. Sure. So I think over a matter of, a, I don't know, I think the run was about 13 years, we sold twenty to 30,000 of those. Wow. Okay. So coming full circle now for 100th anniversary to be back in handguns really shouldn't be a surprise. Yeah. But uh, it has taken, uh, taken I think, the industry by, by surprise. It really has. All right. And, of course, you've been very innovative. you got the Shockwave. We do. You know, the Shockwave came out, uh, I guess it's been a little over three years ago. Right. For people that aren't familiar with it, it's based on our pump-action platform. Uh, but it can't be shoulder-mounted because it has, like, a bird head type grip on it. Right. little short barrel. It's 14-inch long barrel. You basically, you shoot it from the hip. You shoot from the hip. Right. Uh, and it is considered a firearm, not a shotgun. Uh, but one of the challenges with it, I mean, I can't tell you how many we've sold, but people came back and said, well, how do you sight this? How do you shoot from uh, the how hip? Do, yeah, how do I point? How do I Because unlike the uh, movies, shotguns, you actually <laughs> do have to aim or point them in the right direction. And without a lot of practice, you know, and for well, a personal defense situation, we all tend to be. shoot high with it. Don't Absolutely, we? it's shooting high. high. Yep, exactly. Okay, so what'd you do? So we partnered with Crimson Trace, mm-hmm. and they developed what they're calling their laser saddle that actually fits down right over the receiver of the gun. They're selling it as an accessory. We're actually selling a shockwave model now that comes with it. I, I, and I'm going to tell you, the first time I shot it. Shot high and went. This thing needs a laser. Like <laughs> probably I was one of a thousand people. Oh, said you that. want to take credit for yeah, that? Yeah, <laughs> right, right. And I'm just going to tell you, if you want a shockwave, if you had one, have one, you need to get the laser. If you don't have one, buy the one that comes with the laser. It completely changes it. It makes it so easy to hit what you're, you're wanting to shoot. And you know, this gun because it is, you know, a long gun, but it's compact. Right. Uh, it's great for. You think backpacking, home defense, of course, but backpacking, camping, maybe being out in bear country. I just think it. I bet a lot of people get it for bears. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I think it's great, too. A laser added onto it just gives you that extra bit of uh, being able to get on target quickly. Exactly. Now, before I let you go, we were kind of reminiscing here, and you said, wait, well, you know, what, what's old is new again, and people are really interested in retro these days. That is, has really surprised me out of the gate here. Uh, we've introduced a number of new guns, including the Shockwave, wood, wood stock, and forens, but they're going back more to like the corn cob style. Uh, back to the 80s and maybe even earlier than that. Earlier than that. Yeah. <laughs> but we're finding that it's just taking the market by storm. Everybody wants nice wood on their shotguns again, and, and not traditional stocks of today, but kind of going throwing back. Right. Yeah, the corn cob, I mean, when you go back and look at even uh, way back in the 30s and 40s, right. that's what you're going to see on the old shop. I guess like some of the riot guns, prison guns, yes. yeah, that's exactly what these look like. And so we've got a 500 and a 590A1 as well as the 590 shockwave. See, all I'd with, be all over that. That's yeah. so cool. <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah, I've got a Mossberg shotgun. Yeah, oh, really? Well, look at this one. Yes. Know, this is different. I like that. All right, so I know... You can't tell me, but I'm just going to go ahead and tell people, look, there are going to be 14 new Mossberg handguns this year. Okay, I made that up. Yeah, not, not quite. <laughs> <laughs> but there very well could be more coming. Absolutely. As I said, you know, as a company, we didn't make the decision to go in handguns and it be one and done. No. So we're in that category now, and you probably won't have to wait long to see what's next. I'm excited because i, I got to tell you, I was... Very pleasantly surprised. Your handgun shoots really well. I was, then I'm going, okay, I would carry this. I, I, I would absolutely carry this gun. Good. I, I appreciate that. That's good to hear. I like that feedback. It, it's a good one. All right, Mossberg, old company, family company, doing all kind of new stuff. I love it. It's a great company. Linda, thank you so much. Thank you. I enjoyed talking with you today. Absolutely. All right, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back from the Shot Show 2019.
looking for a place to shoot? The National Shooting Sports Foundation has a great website called wheretoshoot.org. It's the largest database of shooting ranges on the Internet. It's also a great resource for shooters where you can find video tips, printable targets, and a lot more. Find it online at wheretoshoot.org. And while you're there, download their free iPhone app. That's wheretoshoot.org. six years, the U.S. Sportsmen's Alliance has been fighting to protect hunting, fishing, and trapping for sportsmen from coast to coast. Today, we are under constant attack from extremist animal rights groups who want to end your ability to hunt in the U.S. Join us to protect our sporting heritage and our way of life outdoors. To join or for more information on how you can help, go to ussportsmen.org. That's ussportsmen.org. Want great deals on guns, ammunition, and gear? Download the free Gundelio app today. With Gundelio, you can search for deals, listen to the Gun Talk podcast, watch gun videos, read gun news, and get notifications right to your phone about deals and special offers. Save money on the products you want from the companies you love. New deals, discounts, and rebates added daily. Gundelio, available for free in the App Store and Google Play. Brownells has gone retro. Check out Brownells' new line of retro AR-15 and AR-style 308 rifles at brownells.com slash retro. Whether you're looking for Eugene Stoner's original 308 design, the famous M16A1, Air Force 601, or the XM-177 carbine, Brownells has the classic, new production, old-school rifle of your dreams. Own the firearm you used in basic training, carried in service, or that Grandpa always talks about. See more at brownells.com slash retro. Well, this is fun. We're doing this uh, on the fly. People come and sit down, and we're having to adjust uh, our... This is inside baseball stuff. We're adjusting levels, so I don't know what we're going to get here. Right now, <laughs> we're at the uh, SHOT Show 2019, having a bunch of fun here. And our friends come in and sit down with us. Buzz Mills from Gunsight. Ken Campbell from Gunsight just joined us. Hey, Buzz, I'm going to go ahead and talk to me there. See how this works. All right. It sounds like it's working fine to me. All right. Very good. All right. Ken, yak at me a little bit. Two all beef patties, special sauce. Okay, you're, you're done. That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> the guys from Gunsight, uh, the uh, the Harvard, the granddaddy of the gunfighting schools out in uh, Paulden, Arizona. Northern Arizona, but not too far north. Not where you get up where that Flagstaff kind of snow. Not that kind of snow, but we get some snow. Oh, We've yeah. already had some snow, in fact. Have you? Yeah, we have. And uh, it didn't stay around very long, but, but we had some. And that's the beauty of it is it doesn't stay long. Right. And in the summer, it's, uh, what, I would say 15 degrees cooler than Phoenix, maybe even 20 sometimes. Uh, yeah, yeah, generally a good 15 degrees Fahrenheit cooler. Right. And uh, so, when you know, when, when people are looking at the national weather and it says Phoenix is 118 today, you know, we're, we're 95. It's a, it, it, yeah, it's only 100. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, also, I come from the Midwest. You're from down New Orleans, New Orleans area. Right. The humidity. The, the folks in, in uh, Arizona think it's humid when it hits 20%. Yeah, and people think, <laughs> and people laugh when you say it's a dry heat, but it really does make oh. a huge difference. And interestingly enough, I'm spending a lot of time up in the Northland in Idaho. In the cold, it makes a difference. Dry cold doesn't feel nearly as cold. I mean, the coldest I've ever been is at a duck blind in Louisiana. Just Absolutely. Wet. Well, that, that's about as cold as it gets. I've been in duck blinds on the Chesapeake Bay in the wintertime. Same thing. And, and uh, man, that's just right to the marrow of your bones, you know. But, it, you know, you say uh, it's a dry heat, yeah, just like an oven. <laughs> Same thing. Uh, and, of course, you know, when, if it gets too too dry or too hot or too cold at gun site, we all just go inside and nobody trains, right? No. <laughs> not, not hardly. Not hardly. You know, that's like last week we had a 250 class in, and they had a rough class because uh, the first two and a half days it rained. Now, you know, it, Louisiana, you're used to rain that settles in and lasts a week. Right. I haven't seen this since I lived in Florida 20 years ago where we had rain that lasted more than a few hours. Did you have flash floods? Oh, my God. No, it wasn't that bad, but okay. it was a steady rain. We had, we had over two inches of rain on the ranch in, in uh, two and a half days. 
Okay. But what, what's, what's great is our, our lesson plans, we can flex those around. Right. So some of the lectures they would have gotten later in the week, we just pushed into one morning. I see. And that way, when it was raining the heaviest, they were indoors. But then that afternoon, we're just out. Well, you know how, yeah, how what we say, if, you're, if, if it, it ain't raining, raining you're not training. Raining. Yep. There you well, go. Y- you know, you, you, still have, you still have to know how to fight in the rain. Yes. And in the cold. And, and, and how to cold. get into a coat. And how to, you know, whatever the, whatever the conditions are. Bad guys don't wait for good weather, generally speaking. Yep. You know, it's just going to show up when it shows up. Well, we said if they end up in that gunfight and it's sunny and 70 on a nice, smooth parking lot, just think how easy it'll seem. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it'll be just like training. Train, train hard. <laughs> That's yes, it. sir. That's it. The, yes, sir. The more, the more you sweat in the training, the yeah. less you bleed. For those who don't know, give us the quick background of gunsight. When did it get started? Oh, my God. 1976 is when Jeff Cooper... Uh, Launch gun sight. The first class was in October, and uh, you know we had we had. Uh, Go ahead. Am I am I okay? Yeah, no, you're good. You're good. So we we had a, a 40th anniversary uh, a few years ago, two years, three years ago, and, uh-huh. and in the 40th anniversary 250 class, we had a guy that was in the first class. Wow. So uh, you know, fellow from Texas, but. Uh, that that's when he started and uh, started development and and Jeff built it as he went along. You know he started out with one range and then he built it as he went along and he got into you know doing shotgun. We built shotgun range and then uh, rifle range and that sort of thing. And uh, and so uh, that went on along and then uh, the, he developed his uh, his instructor staff. You know the adjunct cadre. Right. And uh, and you know we still have. We still have uh, one or two of those first guys. Do you really? Yeah, we do. Are still here. Oh, holy cow! And uh, and just uh, just hanging in. And uh, you know, you want to know a little bit about the history. Well, 20 years ago this year is uh, when I bought Gunsight. Wow! So this is our my 20th anniversary there. Holy cow! And uh, and so I've been there longer than anybody else. And you, you bought it because you had been a student there. That's right. Yeah, I started in the 80s. Yep. With Jeff and and uh, and so. Uh, you know, it's been 20 years. I've been there longer than anybody else had it. Oh, and, yeah. uh, and and I've done, uh, uh, you know, you wouldn't recognize Gunsight today. We, I, I just going to say, it's, it's exactly the same, except it's completely different. It is. <laughs> and and one of the big differences that the old timers notice is when they come in, the road's paid. The road's paid. Yeah. Exactly. And, and, and so, that the rental car company should have chipped in <laughs> to, to help for that for the it, amount it, of it money a, we saved them on realignment and tires. It was a tough road. I've been down that road a few times. But, you know, uh, and so what I tell what I tell our clients now that come in there, I say, you're really not getting the real gunsight experience. Right. Because you don't leave here, you know, all dusty and dirty and your mouth full of dirt by the time <laughs> You get to the pavement and that sort of thing. That's all right. It's a great uh, experience. And it is that. It's a, yes, it's absolutely great training, but it's more than that. It's kind of, sometimes it's hard to explain to people who've not been there. You're saying, and I tell them, you're going to have the best time of your life. You're going to work hard. You're going to learn an amazing amount. You're going to come away a changed person. And people go, yeah, no, I'm telling you, you're going to be a different person, Right. I mean, how many yes. times have you heard have people say, I am not the same person on Friday as I was on Monday? I try to explain, make the analogy, that if you've never seen the Grand Canyon and you love the, the grandeur of God's work there, you can say, well, I've seen the Grand Canyon on, on uh, the IMAX theater. But the first time you walk up there and you see that, same thing with Gunsight. They just don't grasp that, well, it's a shooting range. No, it's more than that. It's a lifestyle and uh, we change your life in a positive way, but it, it's hard to explain Somewhere it. Somewhere on day two or three, they start to go, yeah, this is different. Yeah. And by day four and certainly by day five, you know, and they walk away. And it's not just, wow, you're a different person. You're a different person for the rest of your life. Yes. You don't look at things the same way. I mean, and, it really is true. And you make friends. You make friends there that you'll have for the rest of your life. Yeah, exactly right. Real, Hold on a second real here, good guys. Friend. I'm going to take a uh, quick break here. We're talking with Ken Campbell and Buzz Mills from uh, Gunsight. If you want to check it out, it's G-U-N-S-I-T-E. And very easy for you to check that out. Uh, I'm at the Crimson Trace booth at the uh, 2019 SHOT Show. We've got geez, tons of folks around here. And I just want to tell you, I mean, and you know how much I've said this, if you get a chance once in your life, you should go to Gunsight. It'll be the first time you go because... There's always a second time. Tom Gresham here. Tell you what, uh, don't go far. We'll be right back from SHOT Show 2019. We'll be right back to the Crimson Trace booth and Tom Gresham's Gun Talk. We're back 
back with you, Tom Gresham at the Shot Show. It's Crimson Trace booth. We're having a bunch of fun here talking with Buzz Mills and Ken Campbell from Gunsight. Now, Ken, you were telling me during the break that uh, you guys have uh, kind of a cool retro class going. What is that? It is defensive lever rifle, single action revolver. You know, back Jeff Cooper talked about the New York Special, and it was a lever gun. Right. Uh, lever guns are, are good defensive rifles, so we put together a class on that. It's uh, going to be about three days working with the lever gun as a defensive gun, and then a couple days a single action revolver. Okay, I mean, it sounds like fun, but is, is, is it actually, can you actually use those tools in self-defense? You sure can. Uh, sure, it, it, a lot of sure people can. do. Yeah, just need to know how to run them. Yeah, exactly. You just got to know how to make it work. We've taught some single action stuff with the revolvers before in predator defense, right. four-legged predator sure. type. Right. And they're carrying those big bore uh, uh, revolvers in, in single action. And we teach them how to go against the bear, the moose, and so on. It's no different with a two-legged predator. Sure. Something's out to hurt you. You got to take exactly. care of it. Okay. Now, tell me about the uh, the Brave program that you got. Brave. Ballistic response against violent encounters. You've got to have a two fifty pistol class. But once you've got that, this covers a day of street crimes a day of home defense, a day of vehicle defense, some TAC med in there. You're actually working in some of our houses on the ranch talking about how to defend your home. Wow. Um, it, it's realistic. Um, what what you're, what you're looking for to learn how to protect yourself and your family to that next level. I love the sound of that. That's that's real-world stuff that you can use. You know, we could probably fit you into one of those classes. Uh, if I'll have to do is get out there at some point. We just add plane defense. Now, now you have Brave 2. What is that? Yeah, and Brave 2, we've got enough alumni from Brave that uh, they're wanting more. So we're, we're adding some team tactics to it. Um, the, the lesson plan is not quite complete yet on it, but we're taking it to the advanced level. We're making the problems more difficult. We use our robots, you know, the oh, remote yeah. control cars, so the bad guys moving around through the crowd of people. Holy cow. Um, to, to so you're having to deal with a, a lot of good guys out there and a bad guy you have to deal with and not shoot the good guys. Absolutely. Yes. Always challenging. You know, um, one of the things we at least ought to mention is you have the kind of instructor core and people you can tap into who can teach almost anything because they've done almost everything. We've got, as pompous as it sounds, we've got the best instructor cadre in the business. But I'm not bragging if we can back it up. Yeah, I mean, and the, the, everything from EOD to meds to, you know, uh, para jumpers to, I mean, what? Yes, sir. I mean, there are times when I've seen helicopters come into your place. You train all sorts of interesting, weird stuff going We do. On. Uh, a lot of them, uh, they, they work for the DOD. The, um, yeah, right, right. right <laughs> with yeah, with yeah. those uh, or, or asterisks. The, or the no such agency. Yeah. Yes, exactly. People show up and go, yeah, we were never here. But our bread and butter is, is the folks that are listening to us right now. Yeah. It, it's earth people. Uh, the other thing I, I would tell people. Please consider going as a couple because the multiplier effect of both of you being armed and being trained and being able to communicate is phenomenal. I mean, two is not like twice as good as one. No. Two is like five times better than one. At least, at least that. It's a tremendous force multiplier. And, 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 and then in a situation like that, Tom, uh, you both know what the other guy's doing. Yes, exactly. And, and I'm wondering. And, and you know, uh, and then there, there's, there's a lot of tactics and, and a lot of movement and uh, reloading and stuff like that that you can communicate with each other and know what you're doing. Yeah. L- let us teach your spouse. You, don't want, you never want to teach your spouse to <laughs> no. paddle a canoe, drive a stick shift, or shoot. Yes. Let us do it. Or fly an airplane. No. Or fly an airplane. <laughs> or play golf. Or play tennis. Or, you know. It's a it's a fairly long list. Actually. Yeah, it, it is, and, and uh, you know, I, I, I even learned <clears throat> I lear- learned uh, not too long ago that you don't want to teach. Uh, I, I already knew you didn't want to teach your your uh, spouse. You don't want to teach your daughter. And recently, I learned you don't want to teach your granddaughter how to drive. There it is. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I appreciate. Gunsight is g u n s i t e dot com. Always a pleasure, gentlemen. Thank you, Tom. Thank have, you. Have Absolutely. a great show. All righty, will do. You take, take care. Uh, yeah, anytime I can, I'll try to get out to Gunsight. It is, uh, it's real, it's kind of my Disneyland place. I love it. Hey, make a plan to be out there. Maybe I'll see you there. We'll be right back with more gun talk from the SHOT Show. 